welcome to Handsome Griffin's Occasions in YouTube tutorials. Today we're looking at Excel and statistics. And we're looking at cross color Wallace. And the cross color Wallace is the non parametric equivalent for the one way ANOVA. So you have three or more sets of data, and you wish to compare are the means of each group or each set the same. So before we start anything, I took the question from here, but the Excel is all my own work. So what do we mean by non-parametric? The variances for each group are different. Um, the data is, say, on an ordinary scale, non-continuous, or the data is non-normally distributed. So just line 11 there, you have three or more conditions you wish to compare. Data is independent, OK, and it's non-parametric. So the question is, you have three groups, group A, no exercise, group B, 20 minutes of jogging per day, and group C, 60 minutes. And after a month, uh, they're asked to rate themselves on a Likert scale of 1 to 100 um, on how happy they feel. So step one is rank all the scores, and step two there is find the totals for each rank. So if we just have a little look at the numbers here. There is the data, and over here I've ranked them, so if I just go slow down here a little bit. Number 22 is 1, and number 66 is 24, so we're ranking them from lowest to highest. And if you notice, one or two numbers over here are bold, italic, and underlined. So there are two 29s, so if you are going along and you're ranking them, that would be rank 5, there are two 29s, so in, there's two 5s, but really that's 5 and 6, because the number after that would be 7, so there's two 29s, so the average rank of 5 and 6 is 5.5, there are three 49s, which are 13, 14 and 15, and the average of those three is 14, so let's go down a bit, how did I get that to work? There's a screen grab of the formulas, so I ranked B, rank that average. So that's the thing. Rank won't work. If I say rank of 5 and 6, I get 5. If I say rank of 13, 14, and 15, I get 13. So rank B36 in the range $B, $36 to $D, $43. Uh, the dollars here make the thing absolute. So whether you drag left, right, up, down, the dollar P dollar thirty six is locked, secured, and the B thirty six will change. If you drag down B thirty six becomes B thirty seven. So this is the I think the only tricky bit. So I put that formula in there. Rank B thirty six in the range dollar B dollar thirty six <coughs> the dollar F dollar forty three and I get two. Drag down B36 becomes B37, but the dollar B, dollar 36, etc. remains locked. I get that. I sum each column here, 76.5. Sum this column here, 79.5. Sum this column here, 144. Step 3 is find the H value. There's the formula. N is 24, three sets of 8. And this guy, TC squared over NC, is at 76.5 squared over 8, plus 79.5 squared over 8, plus 144 squared over 8. And there's the formula to how I did that. So, sorry for that, zoom in. So 76.5 squared over 8 plus 79.5 squared over 8 plus 144 squared over 8. They're the individual numbers. And then we sum those numbers again and we get 4,113. We then 
use this formula here that I repeated again and we work out H and H is 7.27125 and step 4 is get the degrees of freedom the degrees of freedom is the number of groups minus 1 3 minus 1 is 2 H naught is the data the three means are the same and H A is at least one of the means differ now which tables do you want to use in step 5 if the data in each group is small say 5 or less well really 1 to 4 you would use the Kruskal Wallace tables um, but if the groups are 5 or more you can use the choice squared now if it's 5 it's sort of 50 50 to be honest which way you want to go but we have 8 which is sort of well over the 5 threshold so in that case you use the choice squared tables so if I just go down a little bit there's choice squared there's 5% 2 degrees of freedom 5.991 so if our computed H is less than 5.991 we accept another hypothesis the three means are the same if our computed chi is greater than 5.991 we reject another hypothesis as in there if we're in the black area now we got seven point whatever it was so seven point whatever it is is bigger than 5.991 so we're going to reject the null hypothesis in other words we think that at least one of the means differ so just slow down here a little bit R value is 7.27 which is bigger than uh, 5.991 so and that's thinking, less than 5% if you want to go down again uh, the 1% is 9.21 so if your critical value was 1% we accept the null hypothesis uh, in other words the three means are the same <coughs> But most tests, um, the level of significance, you know, whether it's Chris Gowals, Cognos, Smirnoff, Pear T, whatever you're having, is usually 5%. That's the default. So in conclusion, 7.27 is larger than 5.99. So we have reason to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, we think at least one of the means differ. Hope that helps. Thanks very much for listening.